Yes. Okay, we just blown open this door. Uh, we... What's happening here? We're visiting this museum and got The surface of the I generator think, is a mass of some, melted wiring and metal. Uh, Save new game. Replace pre delete previous game. I need to delete some game. Shoe gun tennis. Tennis. I think when I was Save new game something. delete pre cancel. Delete. Box. Save new replace remember, previous well, delete previous game. Dimension. Yes, I know which one. Save new game. Okay. Door blow. Bone, whatever. That's it. Hello everyone and welcome to the Retro Gaming Junction. This is Camilio and we're live on Twitch pretty much every day at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We made a bit of a mess here, didn't we? Judgment rights. We yes, you did. <laughs> it's like we were saying last time. That this this museum will not be worth anything. An old after communications we're done with panel. It. On the plaque. This communication station was removed off the old freighter, Big Bear Running. When that ship was retired from its customary Benchley to Sawcare run. Outdated by today's standards, this system was known for its powerful transmitter and ease of repair. As a side note, the shell of the Big Bear running was used as a testing target for present models of photon torpedoes. An old communications panel. What is this? Whatever used to be on this pedestal is. We'll never know. Although badly scuffed. When it was blasted free of the ceiling, the gas canister and nozzle look functional. The curator mentioned these were in each room. We could open the door and spray it on the terrorists. If it's fast enough to stop them from using their phasers, it'll stop us too. And they'd get a warning if the door started to open. Time enough to put the hostages in jeopardy. A solid-looking door with no hand. A solid-looking door... The plaque has been badly scoured by fly. Whatever used to be on the plaque on the old machine reads, an early experimental transporter. The Murnane 8 was from a time before transporters were safe for travel by living beings. Constructed to be a frequently modified test bed, the Murnane 8 had only a small loading bay. The destination controls were also still in testing making the use of this transporter as much art as science. The plaque on the old machine... The plaque on the old... The plaque on the old... Oh, we don't have the... Uh, okay. No tricorder. The gas canister is a bit beat up from the fall, but still function. A solid looking door. No, I don't think that's. No, I don't think that. It'll take me at least another hour, Captain. Scotty? Sorry, Captain. I thought you said something to me. I know, Captain. Look around, get to work. We have no time to talk. I didn't have anything in particular to say anyway. But you said it quite succinctly, Ensign. Why is everybody frustrated? They're right next door, gentlemen. Caution. You get no response. You get no response. Security lockdown is. Oh. Really? They make us. V V S O P two one two three. The plaque reads. The Dunkelberger Automated Worker Mark 12 was a successful entry in the early days of automated labor. The Mark 12 was designed to function as a cargo helper, 
allowing small manufacturers to cheaply compete against large corporations. Due to their small size, reliability, and obedience, these robots were often treated like pets and given names that were incorporated into their response systems. This particular version was called Barney. Written on the plaque, Federation Scientific Probe Model 331-19A. The 331-19A was powered by a small fusion reactor, since removed. The 331-19A had considerable range but was considered slow. The 331-19A carried a three-ton instrument array. This has also been removed from the display model. This particular probe was used to monitor the collision of Algiers 5 and Algiers 6. One of the double stars at the core of the Algiers system had begun to collapse to a brown dwarf stage and the resulting fluctuations resulted in the planet's orbital paths crossing, which led to their collision. I've used one of these before, Captain. Everyone notices the fusion reactor, but I'll bet they forgot the fuel cell that served as backup power for the instrument package. It's probably as dry as a bone after all these years. Okay, can we do something with it? The access panel is stuck, Captain. I don't think any of us are strong enough to pull it free. Captain, the pa- No, I don't think that's- It would help if I looked the probe over first so I knew what I was- No, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think plying this probe with cognac is going to get us anywhere. That's true that he says that. At least let me take a look at her first. <laughs> I don't think plying... I don't think... No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that... can't have it do anything until we get it running. This display is all glistening angles of crystal, written on the plaque, an early example of the crystalline computers developed by the Lantoids of Tuner 9. Supposedly impossible to access by non-Lantoid life forms, the computer works on a combination of harmonics and light transmission. The Lantoids make physical contact with the computer to operate it. It is said that listening to a Lantoid operate the computer is like listening to a complex musical score played on delicate chimes. The Lantoids view programming as an art form. I don't know how this works, but looking at it reminds me of the time when I was a boy working on my first electronics project. I built one of those old crystal radios. Maybe this computer somehow projects its answers into your mind. It may be just looking at the crystals made you remember that, Captain. It's possible. Are you now practicing psychology, Mr. Scott? Oh, no, Captain. I'm just a simple country engineer. I don't know how this works, but... It may be... It's possible. Oh, no, Captain. I've never seen anything like this. I have no idea how this works. It's pretty though. There's nothing I can do, Captain. They were not a bad machine, but... I don't think we've seen the last of compact mobile automation, Mr. Scott. I cannot agree, Mr. Chekhov. Automated systems technology makes these robots little better than toys. But perhaps one day... There are definitely advantages to having an informed and opinionated crew, but this conversation is not showing it. This is a bit beyond... A WAC... I don't understand what you want me to do.
I don't think McCoy would like this transporter, Captain. Even I would not want to use this one. You? Not use a piece of equipment? Why not, Mr. Scott? This little beastie put out a wee bit of energy discharge during transport. You've heard of the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle? Of course, Mr. Scott. Well, this is the Mulligan Certainty Field, guaranteed to do bad things to you even Dr. McCoy cannot fix. You can block the radiation, but she's not something I'd want to play with unless I absolutely had to. You'd have to repair the wires anyway. I have wires. And the power unit's been pulled out too. Wires. It wasn't easy, but the wiring's... It's never easy, is it, Mr. Scott? Aye, Captain. And the power thing is in the other room. Let's try this. Maybe we should wait until Mr. Scott has it. Fix this, you know? I don't understand what you want. I don't understand what you want. Okay. I'd say this piece of equipment would... You think Uhura would like it if we swapped this one for hers? Scotty, I never took you for having a death wish. Actually, Captain, this one's not in bad shape. They took the transmitting gear and she's got no power. But other than that, she's in fine condition. They run a ship-shaped museum here. You know, with a transmitter and some power, we could try calling the Enterprise for Save new game. Replace previous. Security lockdown? I don't think that's a good idea, but we'll do it anyway. There they are! Shoot them! Oh, we're so dead. Can't even do anything. No to previously saved game. <laughs> Just like that. No game over. Nothing. I saw that coming. Okay, what's this here? Is this the plaque on the old machine. The plaque has whatever used to be. Now that we have the gas canister, maybe we can go back to the other area or something with that. So we need batteries, yeah? Chekhov takes the cap. Chekhov takes. These are empty. We can't do anything with this mess. The capacitors are the only thing to survive. But they did survive. So if they give it to me, it's because I can do something with it. Can I get this? No effect. Ah, uh, just must have been quite interesting to matriculate with you, Mr. Scott. Well, I'd say we're done just... Remind me never to... This is not exactly my... There's little else we can do. I think we just about saw. I feel there's something in there I haven't done. Here. Took the clamp off this. This exploded. We opened up this. It's, this seems done. I don't feel anything here but to get anything here. Says we have the plan, I think, on the first floor. I wonder if we can get any other info. Keep saying that.
I don't think there's any... I found the floor plans for that room. The room used to house a small aquarium. Whoever's in there probably slid the phasers up a drain under an access panel. That's at least it's too small. I bet it's close to a main drain which is big enough. With the phasers they've got, I'd say they could tunnel out in about... Won't the Enterprise detect the phaser fire? Not with that force field set. And we can't shut that off since the security system modules aren't on speaking terms. Well, hey, Captain, they... We'll see, Mr. This glass birdhouse is the nesting place of a... Why would I have this? A WACE 2000... A WACE 2000 gas canister. Yes. Where? I don't understand what you want me to do. The surface of the generator is a mass of melted wiring and metal. The capacitor can be connected to the transporter, but has... The capacitor can be connected... No, I don't think that's... No, I don't think that's... This one still has power? There's only a wee bit of juice in this capacitor. But I think it'll be enough to power up the robot. Oh. It's a tight squeeze, Captain. I don't think we'd be able to get it back out once it's in. Should I go ahead and do it? We could use the help, Mr. Scott. Energy... Not yet, Mr. Scott. We may need that power up. Save new game. Power. No, I don't think that's... Exactly where do you plan to put the... Exactly where do you plan... It's the only thing I, I see we can do, so we're gonna do it. There's only a wee bit of... We could use the help, Mr. Scott. Energize... The plaque reads, The Dunkelberg... You get no response. Is he gonna follow us? What does he do? No, he's not there anymore. Hmm. Did I click there? No, I did not. So, since this is the only place he moves, use him on this? No, it's not on it's using me. You know, with a transmitter and some... Use... No, look... A Mark 12... Talk. You get no response. Use you on you? I don't understand what you want me... This is a bit beyond... No, I don't think that. No, I don't think that's. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that. I want to use him to f search this. What can I? I'm still looking at. What can I do with this? This also has never been used. 
uh, when I use this on this, it kind of said something like I needed to finish. So I think I need to use this on this, or or it's on this. Oh, what the fuck! I rigged wow. up an isolated piece of frame in there as one conducting on plate and the tray as the other. It's not the best solution, but it's the best I can do here. Wow, that works. Okay. So we still don't know if we need this guy. Yeah, we really need to use everything on everything. Look at that shit. Use. The conducting plates look fine, but we'll still need a crystal. We need and power. Crystal and power. Oh, okay. Crystal and power. The capacitor can be connected to the console. No, I don't think that's necessary. Okay, let's look at No, the I don't think that's this. No, I don't think that's necessary. The capacitor can be I don't understand what you want. Yes. Okay, uh, this. No, I don't think that's No, I don't think that's necessary. 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 Are we going to send them a... <laughs> yes, we are. Are we going to send them a... No, I don't think that's necessary. 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 I don't understand what you want. Yes, we No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's not. Oh. This on this? This should work. I hope. What? For what? You needed power. I'd say this piece of equipment would need a professional. Whatever. If we add one of the capacitors, we... Okay. We have this. The capacitor can be connected to the transport. We need to charge. How do we charge a capacitor? No, I don't think that's. No, I don't think that's necessary. If I talk, I can't. I hope we get the terrorists soon. I wouldn't know where. There's nothing I can do. It probably wouldn't hurt anything to take one crystal. Oh. It's just a display after all. This one looks good. Okay, sometimes they don't take this stuff unless they need it. Okay. No, I don't think that's No. No, I don't think that's oh. It's been a while, but I think Let's try to charge the capacitor. We can't do anything with this mess. The capacitor. We can't do anything. No, I don't think that's. Touch this in a while. Oh, no. Oh, okay. The suit of armor is firmly. No, I don't think that's... No, I don't think that... No, I don't think that's necessary. Let's look at stuff again. The plaque has been. The plaque has been. Whatever used to be on this pet. Whatever used to be on. The... Whatever used to be. Whatever used to be on. 
The plaque has been badly scattered. A Mark 12 dunk. So it's a worker. The plaque on the old machine reads An early experimental transporter. The Murnain 8 was from a time before transporters were safe for travel by living beings. Constructed to be a frequently modified test bed, the Murnain 8 had only a small loading bay. The destination controls were all. An old communications panel. On the plaque. This communication station was. I don't want this. What is the plaque on the old. No, I don't think that. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I. No. I... Maybe we should wait. No, I don't. No, I. No, I. No, I don't think that. No, I don't think that. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. Exactly where do you plan to? No, I don't think. Oh, maybe now the worker will open this. The access panel is. Oh, man. I should get Mr. Scott to look at that. Okay, the schematics for a dump. No. This looks more like something. Oh. They were not a bad machine, but sort of. I don't think we've seen the last of. I cannot agree, Mr. Chekhov. Automated. But perhaps. There are definitely advantages to having an informed and opinionated crew. How do we make this guy work? There's no need for that. I know. <laughs> Uh, what's this again? I don't even remember. No, I don't think that. Look. The note on the paper reads. Oh. Well, the note on the paper Bresnia. reads. Bresnia. Uh, Written on the plaque. Federation Scientific Probe Model 33119A. The 33119A was powered by a small fusion reactor since removed. The 33119A had considerable range but was considered slow. The 33 Written on the plaque. Written on the plaque. I need to open this. I need to open this. Captain, the panel. I should get Mr. Scott to look at that. The access panel is stuck, Captain. I don't think any of us are strong enough to pull it free. You get no response. Get? No effect. Something here. Use get talk. You get I no can't interact with this guy. He's just there. The plaque reads: The Dunkelberger Automated Worker Mark 12 was a successful entry in the early days of automated labor. The Mark 12 was designed to function as a cargo helper, allowing small manufacturers to cheaply compete against large corporations. Due to their small size, reliability, and obedience, these robots were often treated like pets and given names that were incorporated into their response systems. This particular version was called Barney. Okay, so why can't we talk to him? You get no response. How, how do we work him out? How... No, I don't think that's... No, I don't think... It's clearly this guy that's supposed to open. There's no need for this. that, Captain. No, I don't think. No, I don't think that's necessary. <sighs> I should get Mr. Scott to look at that. <laughs> Maybe.
maybe it's for even later, maybe it's not for now. I still need to open that thing. Why do I have cognac? No, I don't think that's... It'll take me at least another hour, Captain. Scotty? Sorry. Sorry. I know, Captain. Look around, get to the... But you said it quite succinctly, Anson. Oh, uh, Doggy Dog, if you know this game or if you remember, maybe you can help me here. The plaque on the old me, Without giving me the answer, if possible. No, not, not in, if possible. Don't give me the answer. Okay, let's go back to places I haven't been in a while. The plaque reads, if we could make it run. No, Interesting idea, Mr. Is, it, it the surface of the old docking ring is pitted from micrometeor... You know, Captain, this looks like the rings we worked on... Before or after... There's a story in this, isn't there? Before or after the wells, Mr. Chekhov. Yeah, this is new. There's a story in this, is Of course, Captain. Why else would I be talking? As I was saying, we worked with these type of rings. We were working in spacesuits outside the station, practicing maneuvering things around. When the instructors would take a break, we would line up several of the rings. After lining them up, we would float a piece of metal toward the first one. The trick was to turn on the magnets as the metal approached. Rather hard on the box. What box? We were in space. The lad's got a good idea, Captain. If we cannot go around that big door, we can go through it. I thought that's what I said. Well, gentlemen, why are we... We can go through this door, wow. <laughs> Okay. Save new Maybe game. I know what to Replace do now. previous. Now we go through this. I door. think either one of you could do a fine job, man. I'm not sure if I understand. Why, Mr. Scott, you're the engine. Unless we can figure out a way to roll the whole monstrosity out of here, I don't think there's much else we can do with it, Captain. Roll? What the fuck are they talking about? It's not much more than a giant. Exactly. This door doesn't lead anywhere. I think either one of you could do a fine job manipulating. I'm not sure if I understand. Why, Mr. Scott, you're the engineer. Figure it out. And he's not, he's like, well, Unless we can figure out a way to roll the whole. Roll this thing. Okay, we're gonna roll it. A little bit of cognac in there. No, I don't think that's. Ah, come on. Let's put some gas in there. No, I don't think that's necessary. Are you sure? I'm sure no, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, no, I don't think that's necessary. It's fucking necessary. No, I don't think that. You don't. No, know I don't necessary. think that. Oh, using the battery on this again. It fits. Too bad it isn't charged. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I was like, yay, no. No, I don't think that's. No, I don't think that's. No, I don't think that. Damn it. Move this. How to move that? No, I don't think that. Maybe with my worker bot. That no, I don't think. doesn't do anything. <sighs> I think either one of you. I'm not sure if I understand. Why, Mr. Scott, you're the engine. Okay, let's look at it again. The surface of the old docking ring is. You know, Captain, this looks. Before or after the wells. Now you know why we sent him up. Very funny. Of course, Captain. Why else would I be talking? As I was saying, we worked with these type of rings. We were working in spacesuits outside the station, practicing maneuvering things around. When the instructors would take a break, we would line up several of the rings. After lining them up, we would float a piece of metal toward the first one. The trick was to turn on the magnets as the metal approached, so it would accelerate towards the hole. Then we turned off the magnets as it passed through. When this was done for each ring, the piece of metal would go very fast out the backside. Oh, that's the Rather thing with hard the, on the tennis. The got I thought. Well, gentlemen, we're done with this. This is done and done. Joey's circuit board. And the cleaning bot. 
No, I think you're talking about stuff I've already done. Okay, I think this is all done. We we took these clams. We took stuff from that. We took stuff from the robot. Here we took stuff from this. We built a gun. We destroyed this thing. We took back the batteries. We used one of the batteries on this robot. It just barely had enough energy. Then we need power and wires for this thing. Fixed up the wires already. We need power. We needed a crystal and a dish and power. So we're still missing power for these two things. There's supposedly nothing in there. I've used everything on everything, it's, it seems. Um, I can't open this. So this is why I'm, I cannot open this. We've picked up the crystal here. <laughs> So it feels like I need to open this. So I want to use this guy to open this. I don't know how to use this guy to open I should this. get Mr. Scott to look. I can't use him on this. I should get Mr. Scott. Can I use this? I should get Mr. Scott. No. So I can use this thing. No, I don't think that's this. Fuck it. I'm gonna look at it. It's, it's gonna be super stupid. Museum. Recharge the capacitors. Okay, from something that might appear to have no power at first glance. The proper in room 9 still has a functional fuel cell. Yes, we know that. Man alone can't open the door into the fuel cell. But a robot can. It's literally what I want to do. I just don't know how to do it. Repair the automated worker Barney. Okay, I'm going to try something. I didn't try talking to myself since this guy is there. Time may be a factor, gentlemen. Shit. Because I, no I can't talk to him. We tried that I hope already. we get the terror. God damn it. Repair, we, we did it. Once you have the worker running, use Scotty and Barney. What? I didn't do that? Barney, open oh. the pod bay door. Oh, I couldn't ask him to open the pod bay door. Man, this is not the first time that this game does that, and it seems it wasn't. It never happened in 25th edition. I knew exactly what to do, I just didn't know how to do it. I needed to talk to him with Scotty! Because I, wa I was trying to talk on him, no you get no response. Why? He just talks to Scotty. God damn, this is stupid. I should get Mr. Scott to look at this. I knew it. They forgot to take out the fuel cell. That fusion reactor always scares people enough that they forget the backup cell. It's dry now. You'd need to wet this beauty down and get a catalyst in her. Okay, now we know why we need it coming back. Like this? Better than brandies? More than stums? Look out, fuel cell. Here she comes. Well, I'm happy that I wrote this. Written on the plaque. Federation... That was stupid. I should get Mr. Scott to look at this. How many times are we going to go back and forth like that? We need something to act as a catalyst and something as a contact between the electrolyte and gas. Oh, you need gas? I have gas. Do you need this also? Let's pour everything we have in it. Whatever. I hate to see a sweet liquid used for something other than tasting. But at least it'll work a fair bit in here. Now gas, I guess. He didn't talk about... No, I don't no. think that... <laughs> I should get Mr. Scott to look. We need something to act as a catalyst and something as a contact between the electrolyte and... Oh, something as a contact. This? Or this? No, I don't think that's necessary. Uh-oh. No, I don't think that's necessary. 
We'd be pressing our luck, letting it poke. Uh oh. <laughs> That's it. We need a catalyst and something as a contact between the electrolyte and gas. Okay, maybe I need to get that thing back. Like this thing here. Let me get this back. Yes. You remove the silver. Whew. Thing to build in so much flexibility. The silver isn't a bad catalyst and will act as a contact too. Just now, just use it. You remove the. No. Ooh. It's a good thing to. She's running, Captain. She only puts out a wee bit of power, but we can store it in the capacitors. What did he say? I need to dump She's running, else. Captain. She only puts out a wee bit of power, but we can store it in the... Okay. Oh, All hooked up and charging, Captain. <laughs> One at a time. Captain, why don't we leave? I should get Mr. Scott to. No, no, get the thing. No effect. Captain, why don't we leave it in a bit longer? Well, now you can't put in your beaten game. <sighs> I don't care. Ready to go, Captain. I'll just remove the completed games. List of games from 2022. Most of them I completed it. Uh, some people don't believe that if I haven't played the game at the artist difficulty available, uh, I haven't played, I haven't beaten the game. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit if I've beaten it, or if you think I've beaten it or not. Uh, so now we have power. What do we power first? Save new game. Replace pre Replace power. Okay, use the power on this thing. All hooked in, Captain. Where's the tray? Uh, I didn't pick up the tray. You remove the. Here, can I use you on this? I don't understand what you want. Rigged up an isolated. It's really annoying that they have to walk all the way there and all the way before I can even start to move. Well, let's see how well this works. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Enterprise, come in. Who is this? This is Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Whoever you are, call for help. There are terrorists in the museum. This is Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. I'm in the Smithson Museum, where hostages are being held. 
This is Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Whoever you are, call for help. There are terror. This is Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. I'm in the Smithson Museum, where hostages are being held. Who are we talking to? This is Captain James we T. Kirk of the Starship to Enterprise. The, uh, the terrorists. Who are you? Whoever. This is Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the. Who are you? Who are you? I asked you first. <laughs> Clearly. This is Captain James T. Kirk. Whoever you are, call for help. There are terrorists in the museum. This is Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. I'm in the Smithson Museum, where hostages are being held. This is Captain James T. Kirk. Well, Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise, why don't you take your Enterprise and go away? We don't want any Federation interference. Who am I talking to? Why don't you and I dis- Who am I talking to? Why don't you and I discuss this? Who am I talking to? My name is Lucas. I'm a member of the Lockean family, Onakin. Whoever you are, call for help. There are terrorists in the museum. I've never heard of the Onakin. Whoever you are, call for help. There are terrorists. I've never heard of the Onakin. It's no surprise you haven't heard of us, even though we're one of the largest and oldest families on Lockean. Just shows how much the Federation believes the lies the Serancy pass along. The Serancy are your enemies? I find it unlikely the Federation will take sides. Of course the Federation backs the Serancy. You don't see them taking hostages and setting traps for museum curators, do you? The Serancy are your enemies? I find it unlikely the Federation will take sides. Of course the Federation... The Serancy are your enemies? Our bitterest enemies for centuries. And you're backing them. I find it unlikely the Feder... Of course the Federation back... I find it unlikely the Federation will... If the Federation isn't backing the Serancy, how do you explain a ceremony giving the Serancy the Quelke? Obviously, the Federation believes their lies. The Quelke? You mean the probe? It is more than just a probe to us. The Quelke discovered Lachian generations ago. The entire race owes its existence to the Quelke. I knew it had great significance. I just didn't know there was anyone else involved. This is when the original planet was on the verge of being destroyed? I thought the Serancy ruled your race. Shouldn't they be the ones that controlled the Kelki? I knew it had great significance. I just didn't know there was any... This is when the original planet was on the verge of being... We have as much claim to that probe as anyone. It sounds like you have a legitimate grievance. Does the Serenci also have a right to the Kelki? Then why is the museum handing the Kelki over to the Serenci? It sounds like you have a... Does... Then why is the museum... And we can't let you stop us. This is something that has to be dealt with. This is your last warning. Release the hostages now, or then this situation should be looked into more closely by the Federation. We're here with the best intentions. You want peace? We want peace. This is your last warning. Then this situation should be looked... Is that an offer? That's a guarantee. Obviously, I'll have to check with my superiors on this, but I'm... That's a guarantee. Then we have a deal. We will turn off the security override and give ourselves up. And trust the word of Captain Kirk. Holy shit. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> and we died. Mr. Chekhov, have Dr. McCoy beam down to make sure the curator and guards are all right. Mr. Scott, lower the museum's shields and have a security team beamed aboard. Because that's what would happen in real life. <laughs> oh, you dumb Kurt. Captain's log supplement. The terrorists had already turned off the security override. After putting the three Onicons in custody, it was decided that the probe would not be returned to the Serancy. Federation mediators will visit Lachian to assist in the negotiations on the fate of this artifact. The fact that they gave up voluntarily when they could have possibly escaped and injured no one certainly made points for the Onicon's claim. Curator Bresnia was treated by Dr. McCoy and is in good health. Commendations are in order for Scott and Chekhov for meritorious service. Chekhov? Why? Lieutenant Uhura. Send a message to Admiral Richards. Tell him he owes me more than he thinks he does. Scott did everything here. Aye, sir. I have a feeling he's not going to be surprised. I'm afraid I'm going to remember this mission with a great deal of sadness, Captain. Aww. Why is that, Mr. Scott? It was such a fine cognac, Captain. <laughs> it was just waiting for us, and now it's gone forever. Such a waste. You always remember the one that got away. Uh, sure, Scott. Uh, yeah. Captain, message incoming from Star. I see they got our. I reviewed your report from your. I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. Nice.
though this is Captain's fire log start date 6169.3. While delivering supplies to outposts near Klingon and Romulan space, we received a distress signal from the Romulan neutral zone. I want a little bit of space combat here. On screen, Captain. This is Sub Commander Guyon of the Warbird Infinitus. We are under attack. Assist us, please. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> this, oh yeah. <laughs> transmission jammed at the source, sir. The transmission originated on the Romulan side of the neutral zone. Have you played the new one? I didn't play the Beyond a Still Sky. I didn't play it because the reviews and what I saw of it was kind of leaving me uh, lukewarm, I think is the expression. Captain, this could be a setup. The Romulans might be trying to lure us into a treaty violation. It's a trap! We can't interfere in Romulan business. Take us to our next mission. Hey, we can skip this mission? Set course, warp factor 8. I'm not going to ignore a distress call. We can't interfere in Romulan business. Take us <sighs> to our next Sorry. mission. No, Set course, not warp skipping factor 8. The mission. I'm not going to ignore a distress call, even if it is a Romulan. I wonder if we can actually skip this. That would be funny. Captain's oh. log supplemental. In answer to a distress signal, we are crossing the Romulan neutral zone in violation of treaty. We are approaching the I source of the distress. I wanted to check these uh, guys out, but they didn't give me the option. We are now entering the Romulan neutral zone. Computer. Gaia. Infinitis. Whatever. If Monkey Island 3A comes out, I will play that. Also, oh, you're one of those guys who don't like Monkey Island 3. <laughs> Come on, man. Captain, a Romulan warbird is approaching toward us on an intercept course. That is extremely unfair. Hail it, Uber. I have an audio response only. So, now it is the Federation that tries to stop me from winning my prize. We shall destroy you. Say the line. Fanboys will be fanboys. Man, I've played... I always liked the three, the first three. Like, I know the third is, is kind of like a separate thing. Because um, it wasn't written by uh, Ron Gilbert. It doesn't give... It, that, that, I, doesn't matter because the next one might be a piece of shit and now people will have to retract everything they said um, and he won't I don't think he'll be able to like continue like right after the the second one well I think you could because of how fucked up the universe is like they could make it work it doesn't matter at this point it's so weird um, but yeah each time I replayed the third one I had to convince myself that no this this is really good this is and and since then watch a lot of like let's players streamers people just people of the retro community say stuff like the third one is the best and the first time I heard that was like <laughs> go fuck yourself <laughs> But uh, after years of reflection and philosophy and spirituality and replaying the, f the first three ones like a year ago, I have to say that the third one is might be the best one. <laughs> Romulan ship is approaching on an attack vector. Not in terms of... Ah, but even in terms of comedy. Even in terms of comedy, it, it has a lot, it's very funny, I think there's a lot of jokes, of all sorts of jokes, um, the puzzles are jokes themselves, um, the puzzles felt logical, even that moon logic puzzle, moon logic, anyway, great game, <laughs> do not dismiss, because Ron Gilbert says it's, because Ron Gilbert didn't put his... Arming weapons. Is still of quality on it. 
Right, you kind of poo-pooed it, and because of that, it's like, oh. It's literally the reason that I myself had bad feelings about the third one, because the creator of the first two ones said that, no, you, you didn't back it up. So, oh, okay, if that guy says that, it needs to be a thing. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if he even played it. Because if it's like the the cinema industry, the, the movie industries, when a when a director or a writer has his thing stripped, wow, has his, his thing stripped up from him like a movie or a book or something, they're always super bitter about it, and they won't even watch the movie. Like even 20 years later, they'll proudly say in interviews, "I've never watched it. I've never watched it." It must be crap since I didn't make it. Like, what? Maybe you should watch it and learn something. So bitter. Again, slap at the ego. Too much ego in this industry and everywhere. Too much ego. Like, I don't care about completing games. <laughs> I don't care about the level of difficulty. I don't care if I cheat. I care about my, like, my, it's my own thing. It's like, oh. Yeah, it will remove some of the joy of finding it myself, like the puzzle, but I won't feel ashamed. Unless a minimum of five people in chat brings it up to me multiple times, then eventually the shame will come on, because I am a human being. <laughs> It's just because you're talking to me, I have something to talk about. I don't know. It's some games are a little easier to uh, talk while doing it. This is not the one, though. <laughs> I should shut up. <laughs> well, you haven't been here for so long. You, you'll see. There's, there's others. <laughs> I have other quotes. I don't think that's my best one. This guy's not even a threat. He's not even attacking us, really. Target analysis off. Target analysis off. Target analysis. Oh. What's with the... Target analysis. Target analysis. There you go. Whoop. Oh, maybe I should use the torpedoes. Uh-oh. <laughs> Damage. Shields. Oh, I think I never saved here. Save new game. Change the channel. Seems like a bug. Whoa! Ho -ho! Got him. Save new game. 
Replace previous game. Captain, four Romulan warbirds are on an Edisip course. <laughs> Whoops. We're being hailed. On screen. This is Commander Starius of the Invictus. Commander, we were responding. Explanations are unnecessary, Captain. We thank you for your humanitarian response to the Infinitus distress signal, and we recognize that you destroyed the rogue warbird in self-defense. We will overlook violations of treaty this time. How kind of you. Captain, <laughs> we have discovered a mutual threat, a race of beings that seems determined to manipulate a wide variety of life forms that call themselves the Brassica. If you have encountered them, it may be in both of our interests to exchange information. Spock, transmit all we know about the Brassica to the Romulans. I've heard the name, but we know next to nothing about them. I don't think we can help you. Brassica? I've never heard of them. Spock, transmit all we know about the. I've heard the name, but we know next to nothing about them. I don't... Brassica? Spock, transmit all we know about Thank you, Captain. Our information package has also been sent. Please leave Romulan space as quickly as possible. The longer you stay, the more difficult it becomes to ignore this incident. Understood, Helmsman. Set course for Federation space. Give Captain, a cursory yeah. glance at the Romulan information package indicates their data is nearly useless. It's funny that you mentioned it. I did a four Blu ray player and was looking at some movies to buy. Oh my god, they're too dressy. No, there's. There's six Jurassic Parks. There's six Jurassic Parks. Nine Star Wars. No. There's twelve Star Wars. Eleven Star Wars. Twenty Spider Man seems a lot. There's are you, those are just fictitious numbers. But really, there's six Star Wars, eleven Star Wars, six Jurassic Parks, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Spider-Mans. Which is the real number and seems even more crazy than what you just viewed out. And there's more than that. I mean, if you count all the other Spider-Man movie, like the old one from the, I, I think there's from, there are some from the 80s, 70s, like the Italian Spider-Man and stuff like that. But it said Euphinia I mentioned, it's funny I mentioned, is it because I, it's something I mentioned earlier? It's something I always mention. The way that everything is always rehashed. It's, it's the basis of this whole channel. <laughs> Captain, a cursory glance at the Roman information package. I feel necessary to do my, I'm doing my part to preserve these games, the memory of these games, by streaming them. Six Jurassic Park Eleven Star Wars. Come on, what? The three old Star Wars, the old Jurassic Parks, and there's three new Jurassic Parks, and the Star Wars well three, three, three plus the two like spin-offs, Rogue One and uh, Solo. So such memorable movies. <laughs> We've been had. This day is not going well. Captain, we have an emergency We've been message had. from Starfleet. That's a planetary on screen. Captain, a very large alien ship is about to land on the planet Atipus in the Klingon neutral zone. The aliens stated that they intend to land in the midst of the capital city. Then the ship cut communications with us. Since then, all attempts to contact the alien craft have failed. You are the closest starship to Atipus. We want you to evaluate the situation and safeguard the colonists. We need you to make contact with the aliens. Shields repaired, Captain. Oh yeah, there's something wrong with the sound here. Save new game. Uh, what was the name of the Replace place? Delete cancel. Save new game. I read this or something. Save new delete. Shoot. Gun. Save new game. I'm gonna look up something here. Could I have uh, skipped that one? 
do this but it'd be madness. It says there's anything I can do about this pixie. It's start with pesky Klingons. There's nothing about what just happened. doesn't even mention it. That's bizarre. And people, why would you want to see the same thing over and over again? Because they, they, you're not, you're not important anymore. <laughs> you're too old, exactly. Didn't you realize this already? I need to quit this game. Quit. Yes, quit the game. Bye. I'm gonna reload this. I think the, the sound got glitched out. Load a previously. Restart the game. Load a previous. No. Nope. Still. Can somebody close the window? <laughs> Atabis, Atabis. Well, what's going on here? Atabis is located in the Klingon neutral zone. The Federation won the colonization rights for that planet as per the Organian Peace Treaty. Both Federation and Klingon ships are allowed there. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's do this again. Atabi, Atabi. Poop. 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 Yeah, it's essentially Alien because. Ship in uh, range. I detect one Klingon battlecruiser on a parallel course. Like when they do a next Terminator or Predator or Star Wars or whatever. It's not about us anymore. It's about it's about bringing a product that the new generation will like and people that haven't seen the old one. It needs to it needs to be good for everybody. And by doing that, I think it removes everything that could make it special. Like the uh, appeal to the lowest uh, denominator, something like that, the expression that something like that, you know. You just bring it to a base level. Just far jokes all the way so that everything, everybody understands them. Yeah, that's what Star Wars is about. <laughs> when they, when I'm sure George Lucas, when he wrote the first Star Wars, was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna try to appeal to everybody," you know. And that's the problem. When you write something, don't don't try to appeal. Just do your own thing. But that doesn't sell. So I still watch good movies. You just need to go outside of like the Hollywood and the like normal type of movie. If you just go outside of that, there's still some really really good movies. Maybe even better than the 80s and 90s. But they're less blockbuster movies. You know, it's over the Ghostbusters and the Gremlins and the Back to the Futures, RoboCop, Total Recall. It's it's all done. It's over. It's never we're never going to see a like a predator movie again or something like that. Like slipstream exactly. <laughs> yeah. Slipstream would need to be re I mean What is this shit? If if Slipstream was was made with a, a bigger budget, yes, and because it needed a bigger budget. And a and a good director, because I don't know who wrote that shit, who directed that, but no. I think that the writing was okay, we just needed a good director and some better budget and you could have something that would have resembled 
I don't know, I'm trying to think of a movie of that style that worked, and since there are none, maybe it couldn't have worked. I don't know. Okay, I'll take a break here before going into this. Then ship and sensor red. I think one clean on a battle cruiser and a parallel course on a parallel course. Okay, so uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. He's, he's wondering about what and, and how and where. journey. The leader in innovative gaming brings you the most awaited title of the year. Prepare to give in to your dark side. It is time to be bad. Kill or be killed, as up to eight players battle for control of the dungeon in three multiplayer modes. Watch the devastation unfold in full SVGA high-resolution graphics. Build dungeons in real time, and check the progress of your minions from multiple views. Choose between first person, third person, and a controllable rotating map on the fly. The creatures of hell respond to your every whim. Hoard treasure and savor the sweet taste of power. Your demons call. Chaos beckons. It is time to be mad. of Gabriel von Sanchez. His art was ambitious in its scope. His masterpiece was, of course, Dance of the Anarchists. Brilliant. Sanchez then began to play Ultima Exodus, the role-playing video game from FCI. It was a strange turn. Sanchez loved the game, and he spent less and less time in the studio. He was never the same. Consider Man with Dog. Ultima Exodus for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Once you start playing, nothing else matters. Brought to life through first-person 3D Mode 7 graphics, Super Empire Strikes Back lets the player take on a variety of roles from the Star Wars saga. You begin the adventure as Luke Skywalker, battling through the icy caves and plains of Hoth with your blaster and lightsaber. Then, jump into your snow speeder to defend the rebel base against the amazing Imperial Walkers. As Han Solo, you must fight your way to the rebels' echo base to get to the Millennium Falcon. Escape Imperial forces by seeking safety in an asteroid field. As Chewbacca, you head for Cloud City in search of Han's old smuggling buddy, Landau Calrissian. And of course, all the action is accompanied by digitized sound effects and music, all taken directly from the movie.
alien ship and sensor range, I detect one cruiser, one Klingon battle cruiser and a parallel course. The Klingon commander is Haley. On screen. Greetings, Enterprise. Welcome to Atavis. I am Captain Clark. What are you doing here? And I am Captain Kirk. Greetings, Reception. I take it that this is not your vessel. What are you doing here? And I am Captain Kirk. Greetings yourself. I appreciate your courtesy, Captain. I wish to inform you that we mean the colonists no harm. You have my word that I intend to take no action against them. As you know, this is neutral space. I have as much right to be here as you. If you do not question this right, I believe that we are capable of bridging any misunderstandings that might arise in this delicate situation. I have always admired the Federation's diplomatic abilities. I believe we both have more important matters on our minds. Until later, Captain. Well, it never rains, but pours. Mr. Sulu, take us into a parallel course with the alien. Aye, aye, Captain. Do not think that would have any effect, Captain. Sensors appear to be experiencing malfunctions. Fascinating. Some anomalous readings are reoccurring. That would indicate that the ship itself is changing in unexpected ways. I have no explanation for the phenomenon. I have found at least one area that is suitable for transport. Do not think that would... Save new game. Save new game. Reflect delete. Re Save new game. Sensors appear. It's not teleport, it's transport. Captain, the shields are up. Lauren shields, Captain. We're beaming aboard the alien vessel. Have Dr. McCoy meet us in the transporter room. Spock, come with me. Lieutenant Uhura, if its communication system is malfunctioning, then we'll need you. Yes, Captain. Mr. Scott, you have the call. Grinagog watches everything, eyes shining brightly. His legs are pulled up off the floor and he hugs his knees. <laughs> An enormous grin never leaves his face. Grinagog watches. This person is staring at the surface of the table in front of him, blinking from time to time. His complexion is sallow and he seems tired. He never looks up but occasionally flicks away a speck of dust from the otherwise spotless table. A comfortable looking A potted plant. A potted plant. A potted plant. An ordinary looking table, utterly free of even a trace of dust on its upper surface. A set of books. Captain, this place gives me the willies. I feel like I'm on a yellow alert without knowing why. I find the situation in this room disturbingly irrational at first impression, Captain. I suggest we endeavor to understand what we see around us in order to make a sensible analysis. Captain, individuals on this ship appear to be suffering, perhaps from certain mental disorders. Were I to examine them, I might be able to determine something more. Grinagog watches everything, eyes shining brightly. His legs are pulled up off the floor and he hugs his knees. And an I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What's going on here? Who's in charge? Nobody's really in charge. Maybe the phase. That's one of the things that makes me so nervous. Nobody's really in charge. I try to take charge of little things like making sure the lights work. I don't like the dark. Are you going to be in charge now? Maybe you should talk to the FaZe for... The FaZe? What's the FaZe? Why don't you just tell me what's going on here? If you need help, the Federation has made... Would you tell me about this ship? 
Why are you going to land in the town on Atavis? Why didn't you resist the phase? Why don't you just tell Would you tell me about this ship? Why are you going to the phase? We contemplate our phase. Some of our people think they're the ones who keep everything going. Sometimes they tell us things to do. They remind some people when to eat. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd forget. I don't forget, but that's because I'm smart. If you want to, you can probably talk to the phase in the oratory. The builders built the oratory. The room there to the south, they built the garden north. If you're hungry or if your head ain't feeling right, there's food and such in the hall. Through there, the west door. The rest hall is through the east door, but you might have to wait for one of the beds. The builders were just so logical. They, they thought of everything. <laughs> you can go anywhere. You know, Jim, I don't think there's much more he can tell us. I can take a tricorder reading on him if you think it. Oh, yeah. His mental activity is very high, but doesn't seem pathologic, Jim. Respiratory activity indicates a high degree of anxiety by comparison with others of his race. Now, that much stress is unhealthy if this is a chronic state. Captain, individuals on this ship appear to be suffering, perhaps from certain mental disorders. Were I to ex... This isn't a medical... Go away. You'll get it dirty. I can't stand a dirty table. Slightly undernourished, sluggish pulmonary and circulatory conditioning. Doesn't get nearly enough exercise, I'd say. Brainwave activity uneven. I'd need a battery of tests to be sure. This is a complete new race, after all, but he may be suffering from some blood chemistry imbalances likely to be affecting his mind. This person is staring at the surface of the table in front of him, blinking from time to time. His complexion is sallow and he seems tired. He never looks up, but occasionally flicks away a speck of dust from the otherwise spotless table. That ball made that... What do you mean? Not that much. This person is... I'm pretty tech savvy, so if it's a tech question, usually I can answer. Oh no, 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 no. This is just like normal. Well, this is Sennheiser, so... These are quite high quality, but they're... They're starting to uh, to be quite used at this point but like the cheapest one like the it's the HD 102 something this person is I don't like uh, wireless things I'm not really a wireless guy it's usually it just breaks more often, costs more, and more problem than it's worth. Oh. Eh. And I don't like one who has a microphone, and every one of them now comes with a fucking mic. And I have my own mic here, so I don't need another one. It's just in the way. Go away! We did check him out with this, right? Slightly undernourished, sluggish pulmonary and circulatory conditioning. Doesn't get nearly enough exercise, I'd say. Brainwave activity uneven. Okay. This person seems typical of his race and unremarkable, except for his... This person seems normal for you. A set of book. No effect. No effect.
Okay. This individual wears a placid expression as he piles one block atop another, playing quietly. The incongruous thing is that he appears to be a full-grown adult. Noticing that you're looking at him, he raises his arms to you with a hopeful look. I'd like to examine these two individuals. These two individuals meet. Captain, the man in that throne-like chair seems to be staring at me. Perhaps I should try to talk to him. This individual appears somewhat elderly, but he holds his head proudly and his shoulders are thrown back. He nods benignly at you and a yellowish crown slips down a little lower on his brow. He clenches a short silvery rod with a bulbous tip firmly in one hand. The reviews of the Blu-ray player talked about the amazing sound quality. Eh? <laughs> it's a Blu-ray player. It just plays Blu-ray. It's not like, it's not the... Uh, uh, I don't know how they call it in English. The system that's so <laughs> sound, it's not a sound system. You plug that, you take your optical cable and you plug it into the the your 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 in of your uh, sound system and then then you have the quality of your sound system and like you say if it's digital connection it's digital <laughs> I mean maybe they were talking about talking about like the upgrade from DVD sound quality to Blu-ray sound quality. I don't think it's that much. I think the DVD sound quality was amazing. It was the picture quality that was shit. This individual it was pretty shit. A book. And that's where I stopped. That's the last thing I have here. I never bought a Blu-ray player. This appears to be a simple sliding door of reasonable dimension. A piece of cloth. People bought Blu-rays, some people bought HD DVDs. I was like, oh, I'm gonna wait. And I'm still waiting. <laughs> like 15 years later. A simple slide. I don't know. It's. I think, in my opinion, Blu-ray kind of became obsolete quickly because of the digital distribution. Examine these guys. I believe this person has reached adulthood physically, Jim. But brain activity scans suggest he may have suffered a failure to mature intellectually. Remember, this is a new race, Captain. While these people are clearly humanoid, I may not have all the answers. This individual is a bit elderly, but not in too bad shape when you take that into account. He seems to be suffering some brain lesions that might be genetically linked. Nerve degeneration in the lower back. Save new game. Cancel. Save new game. Replay. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Jacobsy. What can you tell me about this place, Jacobsy? Can I play with the blocks, Jake? Can you smile for me, Jacobs? Is there something you want, Jacobs? What can you tell me about this place, Jacobsy? The sweet-faced adult shakes his head. <laughs> no. I'm Captain James T. Kirk. Jakesy. What can you tell? Can I play with the blocks, Jakesy? The sweet-faced adult. 
I'm Captain James. What can you tell me? Can I play with? Can you smile? The sweet-faced. You no, know, he can't smile for me. I'm Captain James T. Kirk. Jakes. What can you tell? Can, can you smile for me? Is there something you want? The sweet-faced adult. I'm Captain James. Jakes. What can you tell? Can, can you? Is there something you want, Jakes? Can you smile for me, Jakes? Is there some? What can you tell me about this place, Jakes? Is there something? The sweet. Thinks you peasants should know your place and speak only when royalty speaks first. Oh yeah, Uhura. I need to use Uhura. What a noble-looking woman you are. You have my permission to speak. Uhura in the original kind of serves as the communication officer and the counselor. What a noble-looking woman you are. You have my permission to speak. Permission to speak you freely. stand out remarkably, bearing yourself like a queen. Yet these carls do not treat you as royalty. Surely you have royal blood flowing in your veins? Bloodlines do not dictate who we listen to. We weigh a person's worth by their actions. My leader here is Captain Kirk, an admirable man. Speak with him. My ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. Royalty recognizes royalty, does it not? Look on me and decide for yourself. You will know. Bloodlines do not dictate who we listen to. We weigh a person's worth by their actions. My leader here is Captain Kirk, and ad my ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. Royalty recognizes royalty, does it not? Look on me and decide for yourself. Bloodlines do not dictate who we listen to. We weigh a person's worth by their actions. My ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. Bloodlines- Fuck! What heresy! Methinks you peasants should know you. The elderly man ignores your. Oh shit. Let's reload. I really feel there's a problem with the audio. Let's reload like a really old. Yeah, this one. Ah, uh, nope, it's not there anymore. Wow. It's particular for that mission. That's weird. Yeah, here it's perfect, no sound. <laughs> Is it supposed to be the sound of the, the alien ship? Because it's kind of annoying. A piece of cloth. A simple sliding door of reasonable... The news. Her, uh, her in, and now say that we have ancestors. Rule, noble-looking woman. You, you have my. <sighs> whatever you can say. Whatever you want. Look this guy. You stand out. Really? Bloodlines do not. My ancestors rule. Oh, I am so glad to find another of royal blood. I am so tired of sitting here all the time. But whenever I leave, thralls and lesser folk plant their fundaments on the great throne, and that's just not acceptable. I know you'll mind the proprieties and not let anyone else sit on the throne. And now, I'll finally be able to go and get some rest. Oh. Save new game. Replace pre- <laughs> Let's go sit on that floor. What an uncomfortable chair. Oh. It's not a very comfortable chair. Watch out, Lieutenant. Remember, uneasy lies the head that wears a I don't think Shakespeare had in mind a madman with delusions of grandeur, Doctor. Particularly since he was writing of his own Queen Elizabeth's ancestor, Henry IV.
This chair is a great way to set off an attack of sciatica, Jim. Not very interesting, Captain. Except insofar as the individual was willing to sacrifice comfort for these rather doubtful additions. A look of bliss lights up the soft features of this adult-sized child, and he gently shares a long hug with the lieutenant. Uh, so About. I'm Captain James T. Jakes. What can you tell me about this place? The sweet faced adult. Ah, he doesn't want to talk to us. Okay, we need to hug the guy. There you go. Nice. Nice. I'm Captain James T. Kirk. Jakes. What can you tell me about this place, Jakes? That's so creepy. The sweet faced adult. Oh, fuck off, man. Okay, let's, let's hug everybody. No, 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 no. Hug him. Spock? Statistically speaking, this Spock? Captain, there's nothing I can do for this individual with what I'm carrying with me. This is hardly more than a first aid kit. Captain, there's nothing I can do for... We did that already. I believe this person... Has... So we did that. So we didn't do this. Statistically speaking, this adult individual is overly heavy for an average humanoid of his friend. Nothing to report. I'd like to examine this individual. This individual may be... Perhaps we should look around more, Captain. A book. I don't see how these can help us, Captain. A simple sliding door. An ordinary chair, originally similar to others in the room, except someone has nailed the legs onto a raised platform, increased the height of the back, widened the seat, and glued on broad and blocky arms. Bright paint in red and purple and gold gives it a garish appearance. You think it's meant to look impressive, but it just looks rather pathetic. Tricorder informs me that the Klingon boarding crew has just beamed into the adjacent room, Captain. You are Kirk. I am Kla, Captain of the Paul Yar. This is my aid. These Klingons are so innovative in their introductions. Shh. I'm Captain James T. Kirk, commanding the USS Enterprise. These are my crew, Science Officer Spock, Lieutenant Uhura, and Dr. McCoy. What can I do for you, Captain Kla? You can avoid interfering with me or my man as we look around the ship, the same as you. And with the same air of mutual goodwill, we will avoid interfering with your activities. Unless we have cause to think your actions in some way threaten us or the Empire we represent. We do not threaten the Klingon Empire, Captain Clark, nor its legitimate representatives. Then there will be no difficulties between us, will there? We will leave you to your investigations now, and carry on our own. You won't mind if we're in the room, will you? We'd consider it a mark of our mutual respect, Captain, if you don't get in our way, and we won't get in yours. Save new game. Replace pre- A wan-looking female stands dejectedly, her shoulders slumped, her whole appearance expresses deep worry and bone-crushing weariness. Okay. Captain, I think that woman looks like someone we should talk. Captain, I'm seeing all these people as being under medication, or needing to be. And they're all unhealthy in one way or another. It really doesn't surprise me that they associate food and medicine. 
Their veins are probably always swimming with some chemical stew. Captain, it appears that the inhabitants of this ship take it as given that food and medication go naturally together. With all respect to Dr. McCoy, I would dislike having a physician medicating all food that passed my lips. A wan look. Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship. Are you feeling all right, ma'am? Can you tell me what the... You look so sad. Would it help to tell us why you look so down? Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Are you... You look so sad. Would it help to tell us why you look so down? Do you have any children, sir? I do. A son. And I've just not treated him right. Tried to do right, but everything died, and I can't give him what he wants. What I think he needs. A mother's job can be difficult. I'm sure you did your best for your son. Would you tell me about him? What is it you can't give him? What died? Did you hurt somebody? Something? A mother's job can be difficult. I'm sure you... Little Stan Bob. I try to feed him right. Give him safe food. He really likes fresh fruit. Now he can't have it anymore, and it's all my fault. Ma'am, hold on to this idea. It may not be your fault at all. We'll try to help. You have my... Your son still loves you just for trying. Of that, I'm certain. He wouldn't want you to be so sad. Ma'am, hold on to this idea. It may not be your fault at all. We'll try to help. The woman's eyes brim with tears, and she can't continue the conversation. Hi there, I'm Captain James. Are you feeling all right, ma'am? Can you tell me what... Hi there, I'm Captain James. I'm called Ma. My son is Stan Bob. And I've failed him. I feel so badly. I'm a terrible mother. The woman's eyes brim with tears, and she can't continue. Hi there, I'm Cap. Are you feeling all right? I'm a bad mother. I tried to do right, get him what he wants. Who died? What What died? I'd, I'd like to help if I can. I did it. I'm a bad person. Killed all the plants, and now they don't produce any more. I'm not worthy to have a good son like him. A mother's job can be difficult. Why do you think you were the one who killed the plants? Have you even looked in on them recently? What if someone showed you that a mother's job? Why do you think you... I'm eating what the phase makes for me, so I'm just resting. I'm tired, and I really don't feel like doing anything. I'd be so happy to know my boy could have safe food again. It's better for him than what the phase provides, I think. But I killed the plants. They're dead, and I can't make them better. The woman's eyes... I could try to talk with the repeat. Go. I could try to talk. Hi there, I'm Captain. Are you feel you look. Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the. I'm called the woman. Use her on her. I could try to talk with her if you wish, Captain. Go. She doesn't look well, Jim. It might be more useful were I to examine her or try. To... I think this female would be more likely to benefit by Dr. McCoy's. Female, just moving into middle age. Her overall level of health is fairly good. Vital signs are down marginally, and mental readings indicate a chemical array typical of severe depression. However, there are high levels of tranquilizing chemicals in her bloodstream. The woman seems withdrawn and dis. She doesn't look well. Female of Nothing to report. Captain, I think. Captain, I'm seeing all these people. Captain. A mechanized food delivery and recycling system not unlike what you see. The machine whirs, lights blink, and a prepackaged container of food is deposited on the tray. A mechanized food, a prepackaged. The box of prepared food is light and calm. A prepackaged meal. I suppose I could eat something. I think it makes me feel better, even though I'm such a bad mother. I'm such a bad. The machine word. No effect. The box of... I suppose I can... 
No effect. No effect. Uh. The machine work. No effect. Can I get more? The than box one? of prepared. No effect. Captain, I don't think another. A mechanized food. A simple sliding door. Save new game. Delete brief. Save new game. Repeat. Large machine. We are just here to look around, Captain. Would it matter? Your doctor's discourtesy, though indirect, does no credit to your party, Captain Kirk. I would have expected better when we have done nothing to warrant rudeness. We need not interfere with one another's activity. A large machine. Captain, there are no accessible control. I don't see any visible con Hi there, I'm Captain James. Are you feeling all right, ma'am? Can you- Hi there, I'm Cap- I'm called Ma- The woman's eyes- Hi there, I'm- Are you feeling all right? I'm a bad- Who died? I did it. A mother's job can be difficult. I'm sure you did your best. Little stamp. Ma'am, hold on to this idea. Your son still loves you just for trying. Of that, I'm certain. He wouldn't- Ma'am, hold on. Your son still- The woman's eyes- Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship. Are you feeling all right, ma'am? I'm a bad- Who died? I did it. A mother's job can be difficult. Little stamp. Ma'am, hold on to this idea. It may not be your fault. The woman's eye. Hi there, I'm Cap. Are you feeling... You look so sad. Do you have any... A mother's job can be difficult. What died? A mother's job can be difficult. I'm sure you did... What died? I was thinking of hurting myself, and the phase told me that wasn't good. That was true, and I got something to eat and felt better. But when I tend the plants in the gardens... You didn't mean to kill the plants, did you? No, of course not. Before Tuscan ruined the reader in the Phase Oratory, I read about those plants. They need phosphorus, nitrogen, ammonia, and calcium compounds to grow their best. Something's wrong now. I think that's how I killed them. The plants aren't getting fertilized, and I don't know how to fix it. The woman's eyes brim. I could try to talk with them. Don't worry, Captain Kirk. If I have... Don't bother me! Something about this Klingon demands your attention and a certain degree of respect. <phone rings> readings are normal, but before you get more than a moment's worth of readings, the... At ease, Doctor. We don't want to start an instant. Readings are normal. At ease, Doc. A computer terminal with various access ports, a scanning rod, a computer terminal. I think this machine is more up your alley, Dr. McCoy. This seems to be a non-emergency medical station. A first aid stop, you might say. Jim, I think if I check it out with my tricorder as a translation device, I might begin to better understand these people. A computer terminal with various access ports, a scan... An unremarkable piece of furniture offering nothing. It's an inelegant... No, I don't think that's necessary. An unremarkable piece of furniture offering... No, I don't think that's not. I don't see any of this. I don't understand. A simple sliding door of reasonable dimensions for a person to walk through. A large countertop well suited as a workbench with what appears to be mechanized assists and a hookup close at hand. A small data terminal seems to be part of the design. A large countertop. 
These plants look brown, pinched, and wilted, although their root systems are as well developed as those in the other hydro bins. Attached is a sealed metal keg with a feeder hose attachment on top. A trace of greenish mold rims the connection joint. These plants look green and healthy, with strong stems and shiny leaves. These plants look A large countertop well suited as a workbench with what appears to be mechanized assists and a There is nothing on the work console. Proceed with your work. This console is prepared. No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's ne No, I don't think that's No, I don't think that's Combination workspace and computer console, Captain, with robotic leads on the visible hookups. The data terminal appears to serve as data storage and analysis of materials put on the countertop. In short, I believe it acts as a gardener's assistant to anyone working on the plants in this room. I do detect some evidence of malfunction in one of the hookups, but I believe it would take the inestimable skills of someone like Commander Scott to track down the problem, much less repair it. Are you saying it's broken? Only a small part seems to be broken, something involving one of the feed lines. The rest of it appears to be in good order. There is nothing. There is nothing on the work. These plants look... These plants... The room is filled with the rich scent of growing things. These plants do not appear to be... But these don't look so good. These poor things look like they need something or they're going to die. Communications is my specialty, Captain. But I don't think I have anything relevant to say to this individual. Communications is... A sealed metal keg with a feeder hose attachment on top. A the room is filled... A square-shaped metal keg with a feeder hose... The room is filled... A sealed metal keg with a a square-shaped metal... Since the plants in the adjoining bin are healthy, changing this container seems con... The feeder hose comes free and a mechanism pulls it out of the way. But a terrible stench rises out of the container, smelling like many things died in there long ago. Long ago. These plants look brown, pinched, <clears throat> and wilted, although their root systems are as well... A round metal keg with a feeder. A prepackaged. No, I don't think. This 40 liter capacity metal keg is constructed of steel with non reactive alloy lining. The round opening for the feeder attachment is just under 10 centimeters in diameter. Inside is an uncomplicated life form and it appears to fill the interior of the keg. That keg is steel and alloy, but inside is something unusual. That greenish mold around the lip appears to be a wild growth. Can't compete against more complex plant life in an open ecosystem. But in isolation with a nutrient-rich broth, which I take it the keg contains, it does very well indeed. Of course, it seems to have completely blocked the feeder tube, which probably accounts for why the plants are struggling to survive in this hydro bin.
No, I don't think. All the yeah, all the actors are there. Yeah, they went all in. Hi there, I'm game. Captain James T. Kirk. I'm called the Woman's Eye. Hi there, I'm Captain. Are you feeling all right, ma'am? I'm a bad mother. Who died? I did. A mother's job can be difficult. Who died? Little st Ma'am, hold on to this idea. Your son still loves you. Ma'am, hold on to this idea. It may the woman's eye. A column of iridescent sparkles and shimmers, punctuated by floating bubbles of colored light, dances around and within a barely visible central support frame. Gazing at it relaxes you and brings a mild but pleasant sense of peace and calm. <laughs> Captain, we have just been thoroughly and efficiently scanned. Please identify yourself. You haven't been in to see me before, have you? I'm Captain James T. Kirk, commanding the USS Enterprise. These others are my crew. Science Officer Spock, Lieutenant Uhura, and Dr. McCoy. Who are you? We are the Faith. Did not your parents think of me? Captain, note that it identifies itself only erratically in the singular eye, and a blend of voices typifies its communication. Well, all these episodes, these one, this game, when they start, they say written by Pupu. The other one, no, so I don't know if 25th edition was all written by the same guy, guys. This is very, like, and they feel different. Like, some are more focused on something. They feel like, they, they really feel like they, they've been written by someone different, each of them. No, I think they're good. I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, the original series, some episodes are so bad <laughs> that this definitely is at least uh, equivalent to those. Yeah, these games are way up there. I, I know I shot on this for like uh, before because I some puzzles I think are still stupid, but that's like almost all. Uh, point and click adventure games but this is original crew the original mu like the music of the series like the voices of the guys all the crews are there what they do is what they would do in the show um, what they say is what they would say in the show they really come back with all characters they really come back with like yeah it's really really uh, good and it's a good point and click adventure game by itself so it, it is a, it is a whole package because before playing this I played all the other Star Trek games uh, before that they were all shit like they didn't even pass the 5 out of 10 I never I, I don't give ratings to games but they no one came close to 5 or like the NES game maybe like a 4 5 6 5 or 6 but this game and the other game is like 9, 10. They're also very well reviewed on GOG. So it's not only me saying that. They're a very well reviewed game, very well made. The end battle of the first game is kind of bullshit. Very difficult. Um, Are you suggesting it is a hive mind, Mr. Spock? Or is the voice synthesizer simply programmed for a harmonic chord of voices. Here there's even an option to skip them, and we're close to the end, and there was only two fights. Inconclusive, it may also be that an array of otherwise independent machines have been linked to provide the requisite computing Nine. power, although that is an antique and unsophisticated method of achieving this level of intelligence at odds with the overall level of sophistication and evidence. I suggest we pay close attention to both its actions and its words. Oh, I don't care about sequels. You can make 20 Star Wars games, movies. Make them good. Like, don't, don't do it for everybody. 
do a good story do something you want to say like everybody has something in their guts they need to come out put it on your movie just vomit it on your movie phase why would our parents have spoken to you the best movies are that a director or writer that had something in it that really needed to get out that's why most of them do great movies at the beginning of their career and afterwards less so because it's it, it all it, it, they, they did it, it went all out. So not that they, they have nothing else to say, but they pretty much said what they had to say. I am here to care for all of you, Kirk. It is easier for me to care for you when you are younger, but sometimes one's parents are forgetful. We understand. I will care for you now. You will feel better after you eat. Great. A food fixating, mothering compute. It could, in fact, be very much that. Phase, you're about to land on a planet inhabited by sentience in the middle of a settlement. If you are in control of this vessel, you must stop. You must not land there. You will feel better after you eat, dear. Run along now. I'm very busy. We appreciate your desire to become one with me. But it is impossible. Despite what you may think, this is no short route to Godhead. We appreciate your... We appreciate... We appreciate your... An extremely complex mechanical construct, Captain. Readings indicate this is a functional AI an artificial intelligence of considerable sophistication. It may not be in perfect condition, however. Certain power shunts may be repair solutions to malfunctioning subsets. No, no, I do not. I'm not very... Uh, I don't know the Foo Fighters that much. It sounds like you're saying they're scar tissue where the machine healed all damage. Precisely not. Pretty much all the artists that I loved are all dead now. Pretty much. <laughs> An extremely complex mechanical construct. Pretty much all of them. Readings indicate this is a functional AI. An artificial intelligence of considerable sophistication. It may not be in perfect condition, however. Certain power shunts may be repair solutions to malfunctioning subsets. It sounds like you're saying there's scar tissue where the machine healed old damage. Precisely. There's scar tissue. Standard issue. No, no, no. This is not a life form, Captain. But it does register with biomagnetics and considerable electrical complexity. If this is not a functioning, artificially intelligent construct, I'll eat my hat. <clears throat> oh, that's Foo Fighters. Okay, okay. Okay, now... <laughs> you just brought it in. Okay. Like, I know them by name. I'm sure I know their music. I'm not a fan. Of them, I, I don't know them. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm very open to music. I usually like every music, unless it's like super commercial. A female of middle age is seated against one wall. Her arms lie limply by her sides, and her legs are outstretched, giving her the aspect of a discarded rag doll. She is completely motionless as she stares into middle distance, focused on nothing. There is no response at all. Not even a flicker of attention crosses the person's eyes. The person is typical of her race, but seems to be functioning below optimal levels. Yeah, she's functioning. Do I am I functioning below optimal level? <laughs> hey, Spock. She's cataleptic, Jim. <laughs> completely submerged within her mind. Completely withdrawn from external oh, stimuli. If I were to put her arm up in the air, it would stay there until I moved it back down. 
Psychological damage or something physical? I can't be sure, even with rather extensive tests. But from the tricorder readings, I would say some psychological shock ruptured an inherently fragile cognitive structure. In ancient times, they would have said she was skittish or prone to a nervous breakdown, a weak-minded. There are a myriad of childhood developmental blind alleys that might restrict her adult pattern creation representation cap. <laughs> Come on. What? <laughs> what? Did, did Mr. Kelly just decided that that was it? Let's listen to this again. Okay, we want. I want to listen to this again. It's like he's, he, he, it's like he was reading his line like fuck off. <laughs> Do we redo this one? No, we're gonna keep that in. Move Don't on. Stop! You're starting to sound like Spock. <laughs> you do not have to be insulting, Captain. Okay, how how did that happen? Let's do this again. L listen to this. She's cataleptic. Psychological damage. I can't be sure, even with rather extensive tests. But from the tricorder readings, I would say some psychological shock ruptured an inherently fragile cognitive structure. In ancient times, they would have said she was skittish or prone to a nervous breakdown, a weak mind. There are a myriad of childhood developmental blind alleys that might restrict her adult pattern creation representation cap. Adult pattern creation for blah blah blah. Don't stop. You're starting to sound like you do not have to. I want to listen to this again. This is incredible. She's cataleptic, Jim. Completely submerged with psychological damage or something physical. I can't be sure, even with rather extensive tests. But from the trying to shut up, readings, okay. I would say some psychological shock ruptured an inherently fragile cognitive structure. In ancient times, they would have said she was skittish or prone to a nervous breakdown, a weak mind. There are a myriad of childhood developmental blind alleys that might restrict her adult pattern creation representation cap. <laughs> <laughs> he literally made the <laughs> like, oh fuck, I fucked it up. <laughs> Let's do it again, but they don't do it again. Don't stop. You do not. They didn't re-record that line. There were a couple of lines here and there that they missed lines. It's like they didn't give a fuck. <laughs> like Shatner is phoning it in half of the time. I mean, he always has that thing with his voice, so it always sounds professional. But it's just just a voice that he makes. <laughs> but it doesn't really sound appropriate in some some places. Anyways, I'm getting tired. I think we're gonna call it night. I know it's kind of a little early, but uh, yeah, I think that's it. For Save tonight. new, replace Let's previous see game. Let's where we are in the game. Delete previous game. Replace previous game. Delete previous. Look around. Save I don't know new what game. Save new game. Well, end stream. So that I know next time that we're here. Let's see what's left of the game. I wanna live! I wanna live! We did that. <laughs> That's awesome! That's awesome! You didn't even. That wasn't even uh, intentional. Yeah, if you do live, it does that. I wanna live! I wanna live! That's Kirk. In my favorite episode, uh, what's it called? It's the one with all the best quotes. It has this quotes. I said give me the brandy! It has this one. I got the
Yeah, let's no uh, judgment right. So when I just do a family or not, I can see where I am pretty much in the game here. Oh my god, there's still a lot to go. Whoa. Yeah. Still a lot to go. The long play of this game is six hours and a half, and that's somebody who knows exactly what he's doing. He does click on everything, pretty much. But if you look at the 25th edition long play of the same... No, I have two, two ones, one in front of each other, and both of them are six and a half hours. So that's the, that's, if you know what you're doing, this game is six and a half hours. And the original one, the 25th edition, is three hours. Oh yeah, yeah. It's two hours, 40 minutes, or three and a half hours, depending on who's playing. So it's, it's twice as big, this game. Incredible. That's a long ass game. Yes, six and a half hours for a point and click adventure game when you know what you're doing is extremely long. Well, it depends. I mean, when I played, when I replayed the. Um, well, I do talk a lot and yeah, I go off track. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Monkey Island 1. Monkey Island 1 is three hours. If you just beeline it, I think I did it in two streams. I'm gonna look at my own my own playthrough. It's so useful. I recommend everyone to just record your gameplays, all of them. Monkey. Okay, so Monkey Island One was three uh, streams. But I do everything, I reloaded a lot, like doing the death scenes. Yeah, I... I fucked around a, a lot. So that may not be super representative of a normal playthrough. hours and then two and a half hours and then and then yeah, one and a half hours junction. but then the other one was four streams and the third one was five streams the, the the curse of monkey island is quite a long game one two three four five six seven and a half about eight hours and I, I knew what I was. Sometimes I was kind of scratching my head at the third one because I was. It was a long time ago, and I haven't played it as much as the other one. Anyways, use the rubber chicken with the pulley in the middle with all the objects in the game. Exactly. Use the gum. When I played Indiana Jones, uh, the first Indiana Jones games, I think, The Last Crusade, you get a piece of gum at the beginning of the game. And I had it on my on my on my character the whole game, so of course I used gum on everything. Now abstractism makes fun of me and says use use the gum. And for some reason each time he says that I have like this visual of like <laughs> kind of a star Star Wars visual, like I use the force loop, but use the gum. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's raid somebody. I'm gonna 
gonna raid Kirtland tomorrow. You can expect some more battle tech. And we, the plan would be to finish tomorrow. I think we can finish tomorrow. If I finish tomorrow, it means that Saturday is gonna be a pretty long ass stream of battle tech from like five to nine. Well, that's like four hours. If I would replay the thermite cannon, it would take me at least 20 hours. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, the, I played Monkey Island 3 and then a year or two later I replayed it and it was like I was replaying for the first time. The puzzles, I didn't remember them, most of them, some of them you remember, but so, the puzzles you didn't have any problem the first time, now they're giving you a problem. So thanks for watching everyone, have a great night, see you next time, ciao. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. I'll buy that bread. <laughs>